Welcome everyone. I hope you're healthy and safe and finding ways to work on your car while you're in isolation. I know I'm making the most of it. I put on this trunk lid last time and if you want you can check out that video up here. But today I'm doing something much more simple. It's fixing something. Something I screwed up years ago actually. And that's what this channel is all about. It's about being honest and sharing what you learned so that you guys can learn something too. What I'm talking about is are my rotors on the correct side of the vehicle or not? Now, in my case, it's actually not so bad, and I'll explain why, but I'm also going to make the argument to you that an improvement could be made. Just to make sure we keep this conversation scientific, it's important to note that the rotor design is all based around heat dissipation qualities and then its ability to manage brake pad dust and gas emissions that occur during heating. Given this has already been a thoroughly discussed topic online, let's just quickly go through the factors of what is generally accepted as the right answer for whether your brake rotor should be on the left or right side, or if it doesn't matter. The first factor is internal vein structure, and this is something that overrides any other quality of the rotor. What I'm talking about is not on the face, it's actually on the inside, these right here. Looking down into the rotor, you can see that there are veins that go all the way to the core of where the hub is. And in my case, you can see that no matter what angle I put this at, the veins go straight down towards the center. These are straight veins. In the case of straight veins like these, it does not determine whether the rotor has to go on the left or the right side of the car. However, in some big brake aftermarket options, there's what's called directional veins, and those have an internal structure that looks a lot like these outer slots right here, where they lean from the inside to the outside. And in the case of those, the veins have to lean backwards towards the back of the car. I'm really no expert when it comes to vein structure and why directional is better than the straight vein. I believe it, but I have a feeling it has something to do with air pressure. So I imagine that as the wheel is spinning forward, there is a low pressure zone that's created on the outside edge of the rotor because the air moving around the rotor is moving faster than what's in the veins. So low pressure on top and it sucks all the air out of the internal vein system and probably the directional veins just create a larger effect. But hey, if you know more than I do, drop a comment in. I'd love to know. The next factor is something I'll just call holes. So that ranges from everything from dimples like this, where there's just little indentations in the rotor face that don't go all the way through the rotor, or the more traditional cross drill hole, which goes all the way through the rotor face. But it doesn't actually matter. So regardless of design pattern of those holes, that is not a contributing factor to whether the rotor goes on the left or the right side of the car. The final rotor design factor, and where things get a little fuzzy in my opinion, are the slots. So it's true, most leading brands online will tell you that it doesn't matter whether the slots face forward or backwards on the car, and therefore it doesn't matter whether it's on the left or right side of the car. They say it'll function exactly the same and well either way, and it's purely an aesthetic choice for the owner. I am willing to believe that, but in my opinion, that might not be true for the slots that are like mine. In a lot of those pictures on the information online, those slots terminate inside the rotor face on both edges. Mine doesn't. On the outside face, it goes all the way to the outside edge of the rotor. Here's why I think my slot design does matter in a small way. So consider the vehicle's moving forward, rotor's moving in a clockwise direction, and then you go to hit the brakes. What happens when the first leading edge of the first slot comes up into the caliper area is that the deposited braking compound that was just used is going to be on the face of the rotor. And because of this design, how the slot curls inwards and then terminates right here, is that that dust is going to ride the bottom edge of this slot and get pulled inwards. And it's going to stop right there. So what's going to happen there is either it is going to just collect on the inside edge until it builds up and enough of it just kind of spills out, or it'll get pulled back out onto the face behind the slot. So my theory is that there is an efficiency to be gained by swapping the rotors left to right, to make use of this opening in the outer edge of the rotor. So I'm gonna switch these now and I'll come back and illustrate the difference. And now the front rotors have been switched over. By the way, I also swapped the corresponding set of brake pads with each rotor over onto the other side since this is a used setup and these pads have been bedded onto their rotors. So it's important that I send it over as a set. So the illustration of why this rework scenario might be a little bit better Again, we have heat and gases and brake pad deposits sliding along the front face of the rotor. And again, it does fall into the slot and rides along the back edge. 
But because the orientation has now been reversed, as the slot passes up and through the area, its natural shape drags the deposits down and out the side, ejecting it. And now to do the rear. And these are done too. So really, worst case scenario, I could be completely wrong about this, and all I have here are some freshly lubed brake parts, which is great anyways, and although I don't gain any performance, I don't lose any either, assuming that the theory behind slot directionality is true. So really, it was kind of just a fun little project. So you've heard my theory. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether this was a good change or what you think about slot design and how it relates to efficiency. Nonetheless, that's one more isolation project in the bag, and thanks again for watching. If you thought this was interesting, please consider subscribing, and see you next time.